Hello, everybody. Hi, how are you? I see already just put in, if you'll notice on your, if you're on the desktop and if you're on a mobile device, it's down at the bottom, there's a chat and in the chat, you can send me a message. And you know, there's a little, I discovered this too. You see, there's like a little happy face. You can put in an emoji in there and they even have like really cool fun ones too in the emojis. Uh, so you have a large <laughs> selection so we can have a lot of fun today. Let's see, uh, you know, to me, uh, basically here, I'm call, I'm right here. I'm going live from my, uh, my little home office here in Delaware. I hope you are all well, doing fine. Send you a little rose in there. And there we go. So let's have fun. Hello from Michigan, Kelly. Jen, you're also in Michigan too. Yay, say hi to Jen, Kelly. <laughs> and Yolanda, you're from Texas. Good. Is it very hot in Texas? And I love it. Yes, you put the cowboy hat on. Woohoo! <laughs> so good. Hello, I've been to Texas, <clears throat> but on the Gulf side, all the way at the bottom, because in my way back when, when I graduated from college, I was a chemical engineer for DuPont. And this city gal from New York City, born and raised in New York City, all these years they sent me to work near all the chicken farms in lower Delaware. And then they would send me to plants like in the middle of nowhere in Texas. So <laughs> I got quite an education there. But the blessings was that I met my, um, my husband. We both were, uh, he was a biochemist, me, a, a, you know, uh, the two of us met each other. Both, both grew up in New York, but we had to come to Delaware to meet each other. So just a testimony of God's plan for all of us is really beautiful and mysterious. Great. So good. Yolanda, it is too hot. It's very hot here in Delaware. And we are like in Texas, the Gulf, in the sense that it's very humid here as well. So this is so lovely. Thank you, everybody, for showing up. I see Rachel is here, Audrey, Stacy. Welcome, welcome. Lisette, Anastasia, and Jolene. Hello. Thank you. Thank you for coming. And for those of you that will be seeing this on the replay, welcome. <laughs> and be able to say hi in the chat when you'll see we will be doing this. Very, very good. So wonderful. Um, in about just, I'll give some more folks some time to kind of uh, jump in here and then like in all things you know i love to invite you into prayer and then we're going to jump in because i actually huh, i love sharing stuff <laughs> you guys know this i uh this week was our first week so we have for the past year been running a group called the thrive support group and it's been at its beta, like founding members group, and it has not been open. We opened it last August, <laughs> and we're going to open it up again. And God bless those people who are in there. And I see a few of you, like Jen, hello. <laughs> you um, were my, you know, we were all guinea pigs together learning, but I think there's so many beautiful things that came out of it, and, and we continue to do that. But uh, we do a live Q&A session um, I love those sessions. It's just a great time for me to actually meet some of the families, but we really do more of a personalized deep dive. And we talked about one of the topics I want to talk to you guys about today, and that's that homeschooling through high school. And that really is a huge topic to unpack. So maybe I'll just have to do another live <laughs> sometime soon on that. But do know that if I will be opening up the Thrive Support Group. It's just a month by month. You can join, you know, the months you need it. And, this, and what an incredible group of, of families, mostly homeschooling moms. And we pray together. We, we, I think one of the best things out of that is that we actually give ourselves permission to do this. Like, um, we're going to do it twice a month now where we do in-service huddles. And this is a time where we literally just put up a goal and say in the next 60 minutes, I'm going to get this done. And knowing that you have some veteran homeschoolers in the back, that if you get stuck, we help you to get unstuck. Uh, but nothing like helping each other out. So cool. Well, um, just wait more, one more minute here. 
see who comes on board. I like to wait till like five after. <laughs> you see, you're like me. Um, everybody, I hope you got something to drink. You'll see me drinking from my colonial. And I don't know if you can see that it's backwards. Uh, my family are big history buffs. Uh, we love history. We've learned history together. Good. Um, and thank you, Jen, for that. Yes, yes. Thrive has been wonderful. And I know that said, uh, you know, we didn't, we kept it closed just so that we can all learn from each other, but we will be opening that up at the end of July. So be on the lookout for that as well. Uh, hope to get some more families in there. It's been really such an honor to serve that group. Um, as I was saying, history buffs, my family and I uh, love history. And we're on the East Coast, so we've gone to Williamsburg. And uh, somebody once put so well to me that the reason why I love Williamsburg so much is because it's always the same. Like, like it's the snapshot in time, 1775, 74, right before the revolution. And like everything else in our lives changes. Isn't it just great to have something that doesn't change? <laughs> so, but I always come away learning something. There's nothing like immersive history. And, and so I have my little souvenir cup here to remind me of that beautiful family time we have together. So, all right, here we are at the five minutes, now six minutes. And so um, thank you everybody for showing up. And then again, I know this will be on replay. And at any point during my, um, I'm going to just go through some, some topics I'll do just a little recap of part one, then I'll do uh, some of the topics we're going to talk about here in choosing curriculum part two. And please just jump in and ask your questions. I hope you came armed with some specific questions. I'd love to be able to help you. And the families, you know, here help each other out too. And that's the other beautiful thing about this community, and especially a community that's off Facebook that's directed and you don't get into these horrible rabbit trails and get lost forever. So Without further ado, let's begin in prayer. We'll begin in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. And this one's my go-to guide, Padre Pio, prayer for trust and confidence. Oh, Lord, we ask for boundless confidence and trust in your divine mercy and the courage to accept the crosses and sufferings that bring immense goodness to our souls and that of your church. Help us to love you with a pure and contrite heart, to humble ourselves beneath your cross as we climb the mountain of holiness, carrying our cross that leads to heavenly glory. May we receive you with great faith and love in holy communion and allow you to act in us as you desire for your greater glory. O Jesus, most adorable heart, an eternal fountain of divine love, may our prayer find favor before the divine majesty of your heavenly Father. And we ask the Blessed Mother, the best mom in the world, as my children would always remind me, please intercede for us as you bring us under your mantle of care that we as parents who are entrusted to these souls for just such a short time, that we may do so with love and trust in, in your beautiful son's most sacred heart. And so we ask all this through your son, Jesus, in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Great. Wonderful. Hello. Hello, everybody. I see people are coming from different places. Um, so part choosing curriculum. That is a number one question I get all the time. What curriculum do I choose for my family? And I did a little kind of um, webinar, if you want to call it that. I don't know what people call it these days, <laughs> but I did a little talk. It's in the community. Uh, maybe if I'll attempt sharing my screen, I'll show you where some of these resources are. We'll do that in a little bit. But in that little webinar, I talk about the three, the three top mistakes homeschoolers, even seasoned homeschoolers make all the time over and over again. And that is to start with curriculum. And the reason being that um, we really need to begin first with those whom we are going to teach and really only after we have spent some time getting really super clear with our spouse through prayer in terms of what do we really truly believe education is going to look like, smell like, you know, how do, how do we define education, educational success? What is that gauge we're going to use? Not what the world is telling you, but what the Lord is telling you. And I love St. 
John Paul the Great, in his letter to families, continuously reminds us that you are capable because you are a parent. And please to just tap into that beautiful grace. You're a parent. You said yes to life. And so now we're going to talk a little bit about those practical elements. Part one, we talked about um, how do you start? I know I really, I've been watching, you know, and list, I read every single comment of people that join the community here. And I'd have to say probably more than 50% of the people coming in now are brand new homeschoolers. So please um, introduce yourself, welcome them because you know what that's like if you're a seasoned person, it's super scary. Most people do not have a background of homeschooling. So do let's all support them in, in special love this year, especially you're diving into homeschooling your first year. But on a practical level, I always recommend homeschool legal defense. Um, that's hslda.org. I'm just going to put that in the chat here for anybody who doesn't know it, but that's a great place to look up your state, your state regulations, get that underway. And, and then I always say, do try to find at least one family and that's either to go through your parish. Uh, for me, I had to go beyond that because <laughs> we were the only family in the parish that homeschooled. So um, finding ways to commute, you know, really to get together with somebody locally. Also in the community, you'll see in the menu on the sidebar, or it's in on your mobile device, the three little dots on the top. You just, uh, dots, I should say, three lines, little hamburger. Click on that. That opens up the menu. And when you're in that menu, you'll be able to see local support groups. And I invite you, if you are starting one, we will have resources for you as well. We have a leaders group if you are leading a group and it's a way to help us support each other in person. So that's that's that starting. And then I also invite you to maybe download my Get Ready to Thrive guide. Uh, that is on the easy to find on my website, catholichomeschool.online, Catholic Homeschool, um, Catholic Homeschool dot online. That's the website. And in there is the free Get Ready to Thrive guide. In there are some of the prompt questions. And also, especially this, this week, if you're on my email list, I've been pointing to, I've, I did three videos that kind of give you how to define your why and how to put together a schedule. There's all sorts of freebies for that as well um, that you can have access to as well. And I'll put some of those links in the replay post here as well. So really starting, you're going to have support. You're going to pray. You're going to think about why, you know, you're homeschooling. What's that big why? You're then also going to start looking at the individual people in your family and really honing in on, on one particular area of growth you want to see in that child. And by doing that, you do not need to just decide on, you know, uh, a big, huge, full curriculum, all subjects, all things, especially if you're transitioning from school, you're going to, the temptation is to want to make it look like school. And therefore you feel like, well, I've got to have every single subject, everything. And I don't need, I, 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 you know, one kid will be in history, in ancient world, another on American history. And you're just going to surely quickly burn out, feel frustrated, feel the common phrase, which is I'm not enough and I'm always behind. So this is without a doubt, the fastest, easiest and most successful and truly best way to gain the confidence that yes, you are preparing your children for the world in the best way possible. And it really is to simplify things. And then we talked about how important it is to, to do that and combining, and there's certain subjects like history and science where we can um, we can combine children. We, we can do uh, our learning family style. What a blessing that is. So if you haven't seen part one, it's in replay in the community as well. So here we are into our part two. And today, as I promised, we're going to talk about homeschooling high school. And I know that doesn't pertain to everybody, not everybody <laughs> as high schoolers, but sometimes it's kind of nice to just think about what's down the road. You know, what, what did I sign up for? And can I really homeschool through high school? And the other big thing I always hear all the time is, um, 
Well, now I really got to get serious because we've been homeschooling. Okay. And they're little kids, but this is high school. This is serious. Big transition year. Confession time. Okay. My very first year that I homeschooled high school, I said, okay, he's 14. He needs to be independently thinking. And, and therefore he's got his lesson plans. Um, he's got all the books arranged. And I'm going to pay attention to the little guys, especially some, you know, that are, are learning to read, which is important to do all of that. And I pretty much left him on his own. Huge, huge mistake. <laughs> and the reason being four years, the minute they hit those high, high school years, you just have four little precious years and they go fast. You really need to pause, take a deep breath and know God loves your child infinitely more than you could ever possibly know. And he's going to infuse your decisions with goodwill, with the understanding that your greatest desire is that your children will gain heaven and together you will see the beatific vision. So if you feel at any point that you are not qualified, just please rest in the good graces of God. Because the next thing we'll talk about is some time management and outsourcing. And these are things that really come into play even in the younger years, but they really play to that limited four years you have with your children in high school. So um, <clears throat> I did a much deeper dive on this with uh, what we do in the Thrive support group is that I do a little bit of teaching, a little bit of like something similar to this, and then we open it up for q and um, I. I really am thinking about putting together a mini course, kind of like your roadmap to high school. If people are interested in that, I did put together a little mini course on um, combining children for history, as well as almost done with the preschool kindergarten little mini course that's going to come out soon too. But what I really want to leave you with here is that bigger roadmap about high school. High school can follow many different routes. And, and the reason is, is that, again, ultimately, we want to launch our children into the world, ultimately prepare them for heaven. And in doing so, we want to imbue in them this beautiful relationship with the Lord, a personal relationship. Start that. Start that in those young years, because it's very easy for us to you know, we do have family prayer time. Maybe we're living the liturgical year. Maybe we're involved in our parish. and But yet all of that is being spearheaded by the parents. And, you know, our children are not blank slates to just fill up. They have inherent dignity because they have that beautiful image and likeness of Christ in them. And each child has a calling and a mission that God has placed in their hearts. So they need to start developing their own individual prayer life. I always like to say the saints call us. You will find that too, especially as my kids, I know even just in the young years started gravitating. We, we had an anthology of saint books and right before we go to bed, everybody got to pick out, you know, let's, which saint do we read about? And invariably the children all had their favorites. And I really believe it's those saints and whether it's their charism or their gifts or their vices or virtues <laughs> that called the children, um, they end up being their confirmation names. They end up being their patrons, their intercessors for them. And uh, so really even just starting that simply, planting those seeds of knowing that there is this church in heaven, you know, that's, that's praying for them, of the love of the Blessed Mother, opportunities for them to even just go to adoration as teenagers. Some of mine would do adoration hours themselves, uh, involved in anything where we're starting to even just gift them with a prayer book or something, or some having a place in the home. So, you know, just being able to first and foremost develop a spiritual um, plan in the sense that we're giving silent time and we're helping them to learn how to be silent with God in those teen years as they're forming themselves, because that is so vital in terms of their discerning which path they're going to take. And you don't, and I really want to preface this, that, that nothing is cast in stone. 
you may have a child that you may think is is really somebody that has no interest in college, just rest assured, they can always go to college maybe after a year or so. So generally speaking, you have the college track, you have perhaps the trade route. I have many homeschool families that I've coached their children. Uh, we prep their high school curriculum such that they got the basics so that they can be given a diploma, but that they were actually going on to either a trade school or a journeyman's program. For example, here in Delaware, there is one you can become an electrician, right? right out of high school, they actually put you through your working 40 hour weeks, you're earning a full time uh, adult salary. And in the meantime, you're taking night classes, uh, you're getting your practicum actually at work. But and, and you know, for some, some kids, this works. And how many of you have a hard time finding plumbers and electricians, and all those things, because nobody's really opening up the world to that. So please, you know, look up some of those things in your area, just as you have that in the back of your pocket. You know, some, our community college had a program for high schoolers where they actually got to rotate through all the different trades. And some of the children from that learn some things just practical for life skills, but also some of them actually, it was a great segue into going into the trade route. Um, there's also... Uh, the military route. Uh, some of my kids, and again, I talked about it the first time, it's the ability to, in those high school years, and as our kids are becoming teenagers, exposing them to many opportunities. Uh, my two youngest went into Civil Air Patrol. What a beautiful organization. It's attached to the Air Force here, but the kids that all signed up for that are service-oriented kids. They came from all different backgrounds. It was an incredible experience for them. Uh, it exposed them to the possibility of maybe a military um, uh, choice for your children. But I mean, talk about leadership, community service, so many beautiful blessings came out of that. Um, so, so we had military trade, a college route. And then we also have, of course, discernment of the vocations. And many different orders will do things where they're inviting. And very often the orders really want the kids to be much older. It's rare that they're going to go in. There is in our area, we do have in our parish, we do have a, a um, program, but very, very small in the sense that these are um, those that discern the priesthood and go directly from high school. So some in some dioceses that exists, but not not everywhere. And sometimes it's just a matter of spending a weekend, uh, as I also talked about um, in that Thrive Support Group. Was my um, my daughters would go to Little Sisters of the Poor, and they would just volunteer time. So it's like seeing what it's like to be around different vocations. What an important, beautiful thing to do. So. Those are, you know, building blocks for high school. It's giving first and foremost, the planting seeds for individual prayer life and relationship with God before you launch them. The second is, is helping to foundationally help them know of the possibilities that are out there in little, little bite-sized ways that they can experience that. Um, and then, then, so let's talk about, well, what are you gonna do for high school? You know, there are some basic, basic requirements find those out, like what would it take? And I live in the state of Delaware. I issue my own diploma as a private school in Delaware. Very, very simple. I just have to register which child, what grade they're in and how many days of school we do each year. That's it. My diploma has gotten all my children into, into uh, colleges all over the country and, and nothing more complicated than that. Um, I do have, um, and again, we'll talk about that later. If you ever want to dive deeper into all of this, I am right now opening up another cohort that starts next week um, with the Catholic Homeschool Blueprint, and that's to go step by step through this. We'll go, uh, you know, we go through this whole discussion about planning it. But I will say in that little free guide is some planning grids, which give you the basic building blocks of what you want for high school. Essentially, it's it's four years of English. If you're going to go the college route, you want four years of English, three years of science, 
that and one of them being a life science uh three years of math you want there to be at least some algebra uh, at least some geometry it can even be just intro to geometry you do not need to go all the way up to calculus algebra two generally speaking you really want to have that if you're thinking about using some of the standardized tests as, a, as if you need to do that we can always talk about that i have great opinions on that as well <laughs> and then um which like my youngest never took any standardized tests and he's already graduated from college and graduated from college not in any debt so there you go <laughs> but anyway um we also then want to do history and history is you want to do a sweeping it's really those four major areas now i know some people are coming to us from different countries and they may have different like you know different uh cycles but essentially you want to have some sort of world history some sort of ancient history uh so ancient medieval times sometimes they combine them into one world history but we usually spend a year in the ancients, Greece, Rome. We spend a year on American history. We then spend a year in the medieval times. And then we spend a semester in doing American government, some form of government, and a semester in economics. And that's generally speaking what we'll do for high school. You need to have two years of a language. Uh, don't burden yourself by saying it has to be Latin, even though it's good. It's great. They can actually go to college and start their Latin in college if they want to. So just foundationally know that two, they always want to see two years of a language. And, and sometimes, you know, they can place out, but you want at least second level um, language. And then you also want to have some of the beautiful arts, which I always say is sometimes even more important than some of the more academics. And that's your music, art, and drama, um, usually they don't require those to be grades. They can be a pass-fail kind of um, grading on your report cards or your transcript. But I really do believe that many of our children flourish by being able to express ourselves in the arts. And to not be able to expose that would be a disservice to, to the wholeness of that child and to the beauty because we are moved by beauty. And then I had mentioned phys ed, and that too can just simply be logging hours. Um, and that's just, you know, walking the dog, playing golf with grandpa, you know, taking a course at the local, you know, gym. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything formal, but usually you, they want to see at least one semester of phys ed every year. So that amounts to about two years of physical education on their transcript. Um, religion in many schools, like if you're going to be a secular school, they count that moment as an elective. So it's not like a major thing you absolutely have to have four years. But if you are considering a Catholic college, it's a beautiful way. And if you're considering a course, because again, as we said, what's the primary thing is, is that beautiful getting our children on the path, the pilgrim path to heaven. So being able to introduce them to the creed to the sacraments, to apologetics of some sort, and to scripture study, being able to do those four things is wonderful. And that can be made up of a bunch of mini courses. It can be that they're involved in their parish programs. I know for our kids, they got confirmed in ninth grade. So the ninth grade religion was kind of already set. But what a beautiful way for me. Um, that was the one subject I never outsourced. So Speaking of outsourcing, one of the things I really want to encourage you to do as well when you're choosing curriculum is to think about what is it I can take off my plate. And the other rule is if we're going to add on a subject beyond just those basics I talked about, we're going to remove something, okay? And and the really the idea is that um, you can and you really, really need to tailor the curriculum to your child's needs. So I explained this uh, again in that Thrive group is that, you know, like I had a, a son who wanted to really excel and get different languages, you know, and he wanted to learn biblical Greek. And that was like, I'm not learning a whole new language, 
new alphabet. <laughs> so I particularly did a beautiful thing, which was to, you know, outsource that. He wanted to learn coding, outsource that. You know, so the ability to outsource courses where A, you don't have the experience, but also you have the opportunity to introduce them to teachers who are majorly enthusiastic. And enthusiastic about the subject is a beautiful, precious gift to your children because that enthusiasm is contagious. Um, we've had a beautiful, blessed, you know, experience using something that, and many of you know Maureen Whitman, she's been in, in this community, very active. Uh, they, she's one of the co-founders of Homeschool Connections. Um, they have online courses that you can pick and choose. They have courses that are live as well as recorded courses. And so I availed myself of that, you know, I, but I also availed myself of things like when my son was in um, Civil Air Patrol, they had to do studies to rank up to get to their next uh, military rank. And in order to do that, they really had to study rigorous aerodynamics courses, for example, to get to a certain level. I counted that. You know, that became an elective on our transcript. Uh, we made time in his daily schedule to do that because this was something important to him. He was mastering a subject. He was making progress on it. So outsourcing is a really wonderful, blessed thing. It's not that you're shirking your duties. <laughs> it's really being strategic about saying what's most important to you to teach and so I ask you, when you look through your teenagers and program, you know, just say, where do I want to have a really important discussion? Where do I want to share my heart with my kids? For me, it was naturally religion. And partly because I'm a revert to the faith. So I, and I really believe we are all growing, you know, we don't reach perfection. <laughs> and so therefore, what a beautiful opportunity for us to grow in our faith side by side with our children. So that was always a beautiful, beautiful thing. Like one of my favorite semesters is um, around 11th grade. So they have a little bit of maturity with them. I do Dr. Scott Hahn's Understanding Scriptures, and it's done by the Midwest Theological Forum. Maybe some people have that in their, in their parish. It's part of their parish program. But what a beautiful book. It's pretty meaty. Um, it's hard to get done the whole thing in a whole year. So we do pick and choose some of the hard things, but it was as simple as reading certain pages each week, answering, there's a workbook that goes with it, the questions, and they didn't even have to write down the answers. They just put jot down the pages where those answers were. And then once a week, we'd sit down for an hour and we go through those. And what, uh, usually we ended up sitting down longer and sometimes well into the evening and drawing my husband into the conversations about the beautiful faith, the things we were learning about scripture, uh, learning deeply about our faith. And those are some of the most precious, beautiful moments in my life with my children. So um, to kind of, as I say, we're now, <laughs> really you can see it's a huge subject. You can see we can go into this deeper. I'd love to meet you in the Catholic Homeschool Blueprint and then also the month by month Thrive Support Group, that's where we go deeper. But most importantly is that um, you have this little resource. You have me as well as many veteran homeschool families in this community. We reach out to each other. We talk to each other through these big questions. Um, the one other thing I wanted to talk about today, actually two, time management. Um, time management it's another big, huge subject, but I just wanted to give you one um, tip on time management. And that is <clears throat> when we are talking about setting schedules, I learned um, from, and especially those probably if you're transitioning from a school, brick and mortar school situation, you'll see that your kids usually come home with a list of things that they're supposed to get done and you know homework when you homeschool your schoolwork is your homework yay we can save time but what we do is i'd say right around 12 and and we talk we're talking about children reaching an age of maturity where they're starting to naturally have analytical skills and when your child are, is and that's usually rears its head because they start arguing with you <laughs> about things. And it can come in different ways, depending on their temperament and personality. But 
it's this ability of them kind of just looking through things a little bit more analytical. Very often when we talk about curriculum, and this all has to do with choosing curriculum, it's why I say, you know, there are very few things out there that are written truly for a homeschool environment because homeschooling is more about individualized teaching. It is not guru, teacher, mentor, now disseminating their knowledge to the classes. And that is not mommy's role or daddy's role as a homeschool teacher. You are a facilitator of their ability to master subjects. And there are very, very, very few programs out there that are actually designed to do that, where the teaching is giving them teaching in small doses that are the building blocks to build upon mastery. Uh, very often, you know, we have, and you will see it, and sometimes that's why it's very frustrating um, to see a program where you have the teacher's manual and you have the workbook, but really it's assuming that the teacher has had this expertise of teaching this program and they know the nuances of how to pace themselves with this. Whereas, you know, for you, it's the first time you've ever taught this, you know, like you're, you're trying to figure out how to do this. So I caution you on that. And very often, many, many, many of the boxed curriculums will do that. They will use beautiful, good stuff, but they're really designed more for classroom situation. So being able to understand that, yes, a teacher's manual is great in the sense that it may lay down some of the key concepts. It has an answer key, and that's always wonderful. But really what a teacher's manual is done is it's assumed the teacher is an expert in that particular knowledge base. It's not giving you background. And that's why I say we need to educate ourselves. And now let I hear you saying, well, Paula, I've got enough to do. i got to get dinner on the table and laundry. And now you're telling me I have to train to be a teacher. And that's why, that's where the outsourcing comes. You know, pick an area. And like for me, it was religion and history. These were my loves. These were the areas that I didn't mind, you know, reading the historical fiction my kids were reading. I didn't mind learning side by side with my kids on those subjects. Like I said, I didn't want to learn biblical Greek side by side with my kid. So I was really happy to have somebody else do that for them, you know, but what a gift it was. Um, also even just things like teaching my children how to spell. So there are programs like all about spelling, which is designed by a homeschool mom and, and little angel readers. They're both mothers who homeschool their children and they understand what you need in that teacher's manual and how it's broken down so that you actually can pick up and go and just be able to teach those subjects. So that's what's gonna save your sanity save your money by buying things that are non-consumable, but are really truly geared towards self-mastery, independent kind of learning. And so when we talk about time management, um, we're talking about, again, being able to know that there's 24 hours in the day and you can do just so much. So we do have to prioritize what is it important in our day that we want to set aside time for one-on-one -on -one time with our children? And usually that's going to be centered around those things that are the close, close to our heart that we want to grow ourselves, but also um, is going to bring our child that step change in growth, something that's a realistic goal in a 12, roughly 12 month period that you can see them grow and feel a sense of success. And so, um, Everybody, even you, have your own like internal focus time. And there's all sorts of neuroscience that will point to the fact that we really, in terms of focus, brain time can do four to five hours a day. Yeah, you know, I mean, gosh, you know, when you go to people who've worked, <laughs> I can tell you there's a lot of wasted time. And especially when you're going into a brick and mortar school situation, there's a lot of wasted time. Very, very rare that anybody can sit still for four hours and just focus. So what we do is we can learn, again, self-knowledge. We're preparing to launch them into the world, right? So really important for us 
to be able to teach our children what is their focus time. So in the teen years, it's a good time to just do a simple little thing, which is just uh, usually for math or something like that. Um, you just hit a stopwatch, say, okay, start doing your math lesson. And then after, and most people, it happens anywhere from 20 minutes to about 40 minutes. They start to wiggle. They're starting to look around. Oh, yeah, right. I that problem. I have to get back to that problem. It stopped the stopwatch at that point, And that is their focus time. So then knowing that you plan their schedule, you plan their day and you ask them to plan their day, especially once they get to that, as I said, analytical stage, that 12 year old, uh, you know, around sixth grade, if you want to put a grade on it, um, around that time, you can give them your week's assignment and say, okay, I want, you know, five lessons of math this week. You need to read 20 chat, 20 pages in this book. You're going to do, you know, maybe as a family, we're going to do our science and history together on, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, but I want you to map out those other subjects on a calendar, either computer or, and I really think there's a benefit to, you know, having paper and pen <laughs> and just doing that. And the first few times model that for them because kids can be certainly unrealistic about what they can get done. Oh gosh, we parents can get unrealistic about what we can get done in a certain day. <laughs> so, but being able to say, ah, oh, sweetheart, you can't, I don't think it's realistic to think you're going to finish, you know, 200 pages this week in that book. Let's break it down probably over a month and you're going to be able to do maybe 20 pages each week. So helping to model how to schedule, how to balance, but helping them to know your focus times around a 40 minute chunk, do math for 40 minutes, put that on your calendar for every day, and then take a five minute physical break. So that might be, that's the time you go get up and feed the cat or walk the dog around the block and then come back to another 40 minute slot. So, um, and the last thing before, and, and I really invite you guys, please, anybody in the chat, and I see, oh my goodness, we have a lot more people that have come in, um, been negligent in looking at the chat. <laughs> Hello, Rachel and Dina, Catherine, Marie is there, Rexy, hey, so I see some of you guys from our Thrive group. Um, thank you for being here, Heather, Charlotte. Um, you know, please, I invite you guys to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, and ask your questions. You know, what are the things that are pressing on your mind? There is the chat in the phone. It's on the bottom. If you just click on that, you can type that in um, and be able to, or just voice <laughs> it in there. And I'd be happy to answer questions on that. So there was one other thing I was going to talk about. And Nicole, don't worry. Don't worry for coming in late. Same thing, Rexy, you said that too. This is recorded. Hooray. So you'll be able to see the rest. Uh, and, and I love that because I want you to sometimes just experience and listen, and then you can go back and take notes. And that's, that's actually a really great study habit we can teach our children. You know, one of the things I love about outsourcing courses, and I, and I even would say we would do them as recorded courses. And even if they did the course live, I had my kids, and this was just such a beautiful benefit, was listen, participate, but dial into your schedule that week that you're going to go back and listen to the lecture. And you're now going to either look at the notes, the little minimal notes you made, but now you're going to start making notes from that lecture. And you're going to start learning where you have missed the points, you know, or that it was more important that you focused on just listening to it and getting the big picture. Maybe that's the way you learn best is I need the overall big picture. Now I can start looking at the details and I can form an outline of what's important. Oh gosh, that teacher, I didn't notice. He was emphasizing that point five times throughout the lecture. That must be important. That's probably something I'm going to have to study. So these are all building blocks for a being a good college student and be also being a good, you know, contributor to society, whether you run your own business or have a business, it's all about communication. And part of communication is listening. <laughs> so 
all those opportunities. Are you starting to see how many opportunities we have in homeschooling that really become those life changing things? So, so our ability to tailor a curriculum, it's a gift. And, and I know it feels like a horrible burden. And wouldn't it be easier for somebody to just tell me, just give me this box, tell me what I need to do, and we'll just check off all the boxes. But you'll be missing the best part of homeschooling. And the best part is really getting to know the hearts of your children, understanding, giving them the time to discern their calling to God. And, and that all happens when we, when we really start investing in ourself and, and kind of doing a school detox. <laughs> so good. Thank you, Rexy. I'm so glad you like the replays. Yes, I really, I, I do that. That's the kind of learner I am. I'm definitely a big picture person. And then I can get into the details. So one more thing. And, and again, there's a little mini course coming out soon but it's about the early years in particular. I have a lot of new families in this group. Hello, everybody. And it's just, it's it's so tempting because preschool, they're so great or you're so eager to learn and really play is learning. Let me repeat that, play is learning. Too often we have let go of that and we move directly into skills that are a higher level than what is their natural age appropriate development. And when we're talking about preschool, kindergarten, we're talking about just those fundamentals of wonder and discovery. Um, I love keen observers like Charlotte Mason and Maria Montessori were interesting enough, they weren't parents themselves, but they were really keen observers in terms of children's ability to learn things, human beings, are natural problem solvers. I love watching my grandchildren. <laughs> you know, now I have that. I'm the grandma, so I can sit back and observe more carefully. <laughs> and I just love seeing how they learn things, you know, how they're able to just even learning how to, you know, hold a spoon and be able to get that food in the mouth. You know, talk about... <laughs> doing something over and over and over again until you master it. What a delight. You know, I think sometimes we parents don't pause enough to, to really see the um, humor <laughs> in things, but also the gift of discovering how people learn. And so our ability to do that with our kindergarten and uh, the little preschooler is to really allow them the ability to learn. Now, if you have older kids, you know, starting high school for short years, right? You do need to spend more time with them. The little guys, and God has placed your children in the right order, in the right time. The little guys are learning all the time, even if it's not a formal sit down and learn. There's, It's beautiful. You know, you'll start seeing reading readiness when they start to follow along and they start understanding that the little symbols uh, have a sound. And when we blend those sounds together, it becomes a word and a word becomes a sentence. The best thing you can do for them is read, read aloud, always read, even when they've already learned to read, because there's so many incredible benefits to lifelong learning. Books, 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 build your library, build your library of educational toys. And these are things that are sensory from colors to shapes, to learning a calendar, to learning the weather, things that naturally are around you. And that's more than enough for those early years. So I already see a couple of questions coming in. Yay. So Kelly has a question. My oldest is a freshman this coming school year. I've been researching on how to create a transcript. Great. But I discovered a uh, more so need guidance on how to issue grades as well as I may make the transcript. Any tips, tricks on grading? I feel it's in line with planning because when I attended school, I was given an upfront a syllabus. Okay. And I want to set my high schooler up with a smooth start. Okay. So Kelly, let me see if I can um, break this down into a few things. Okay. So Wonderful. You realize you can do your own transcript. I will say I, I do am part of the bonuses for the blueprint is a little transcript form that I have in there. Um, it's very easy to find 
you know, grades, what is an appropriate grade? What I think you're talking about is rubrics. And rubrics is this ability to say, well, an A means you've done this, B means you've done this, C, D. Very often, this is really tricky, okay? There's two ways to look at this. One is you can set up all those rules and regulations. And I would say it's really important to have those conversations with your teenagers so that we have have set expectations for them, okay? So if you're giving them an assignment and let's say it's to write a two-page paper on, uh, I don't know, on, on the, uh, the Stamp Act, okay? Uh, and you want it for sources and you want it to be typed and you feel that it should have follow your definite, you know, essay model, then what you're doing is you set them up for failure if A, you've not given them clear directions and a model to follow, okay? So on any assignments that you give them, make sure that they have that. But it's really great to go through and we would have a meeting once a week in the early part of the week, and it was always Mondays where they set their schedule, but we would talk about assignments and this is where we would talk about expectations. And the best way to do that is to have them say to you, what does done look like? Okay, so there's done, which is meeting the minimum, but it's also being able to say, what do I gauge as being done in an A, a B, a C, a D? Okay, that happens in a school situation to manage people. When you are homeschooled, do you really care? Like you don't have to move along on some arbitrary schedule. If your child did that essay and they only used one source and they hand it to you, you have an opportunity to help them to master a very valuable skill and lesson. So you may have planned out three other essays, but all of a sudden you've discovered, oh my goodness, my child doesn't even know how to read directions and, and, and they think this is done. It's more important to work on mastery. So while you may say, oh, you missed this assignment, point to the things they missed out and giving them the opportunity to work through mastery bit by bit is a way to help your child to really truly grow in those sustainable skills. See, when you're in a school situation, you'll get a bunch of C's and maybe you'll catch up and maybe you can speak with the teacher. Maybe they'll give you an opportunity to redo, but the class is moving. We got to keep going. We got to keep moving. You don't have to do that. Okay. So having, if you, if you yourself want to have some standards, there are some basic rubrics. I, I would venture, like if it's a writing assignment, go to a place like Institute of Excellence in Writing or, or um, any kind of writing program you're using and say, what are those things that we want to see? And very often it's just meaning like, you know, A, they've completed everything, B, they've missed something, C, you know, they're just barely passing, and then your D and F are predominantly failing. Um, sometimes it is important, and especially as the kids get older, to outsource the grading because I find in all those hundreds of families I've coached, moms are usually way tougher than they need to be. They tend to grade things with the mindset that this child's already 20 years old and is a junior in college. So it's really hard to find that gauge. What does a 14-year-old A paper look like? Math, you know, it's pretty simple. Math is pretty straightforward. Most of the programs have that grading. And so that's super easy. Very often, same thing in more of the like sciences, you know, but when we're talking about history, English, religion, where it's more subjective, this is where clear expectations, their ability to follow that bit by bit. And that's really more important. Isn't it more important to see them growing? So hopefully, I hope that's given you some answers. Let me know, Kelly, if there's anything else you want to know about that. But um, I hope that helps set that up as, as, as answer to your question. Rexy has a question here. I attended last homeschool blueprint course. Yes, the new one, it's the same or different. So what we'll be doing is, thank you, Rexy, for that question, because when you get into the Catholic homeschool blueprint, it is lifetime access. 
And what's lovely about it is that, um, and I put a little thing, is that you're really revisiting that every year. Every year it's the same thing. And your family, is, like I said, things change. What becomes your non-negotiables? The maturity level of your children change. Maybe even you've changed in your growth and your expectations. You're now a more experienced parent. So while the material is, I will always be adding material, I will also be doing live Q and A. So we're implementing the program, but the beauty of the program is that it's foundational in the sense of you don't do it just once and it's done. It's so foundational. You do it every year because the situation changes. The dynamics of the family change. They grow, you grow. And now we're going to go through that little process again. It's, it's, um, and I, I feel honored to be able to go on that journey with you. So Rexy, um, next Thursday, and I put it in, um, anybody who's in the blueprint, you'll be getting emails, but I believe it's next Thursday. We'll be doing our first live Q and a session. Again, those are recorded, but that's where you get the personal attention. So good. Kelly, that helped. Yay. Good. I'm so glad. Anybody else have any questions? Let's see if I match. So we're almost at the top of the hour. This has been just such a delight for me to be with you all. It's so great. So I see, yes, Lynn, Devin, KC, you joined too. Kathleen, hello, Sherry, Anna, Laura. Thank you. Thank you so much for showing, you know, coming here again, such an honor. Okay, good. Rexy, that makes sense for you. Good. You're looking forward to it. Me too. And you know, there's in the courses, which are right here in the community. Again, I love it. There's just it's one place and I don't have to get lost. And hi, Marie. <laughs> this is another beautiful family that went through the blueprint with us, Marie. I hope to see you there too. And um, what we're going to do. Yep. Can't wait to go through it with you as well. And those live Q&A sessions once a week, we'll be going through that. And then we also have a bonus section. It's just a way for us to really make real this idea of long term, you know, sustainable growth, but growth that really, really brings joy back to our children and that individualized uh, curriculum, you know, to be able to, as I say, save time, save sanity, but also launch them and you feel confident that yes they're ready they're ready for the world god i did i did what i could <laughs> anyway so casey asked a question Paula, do you help with executive functions for a high schooler um so okay so i think if what you mean and maybe you can clarify that for me you know um do you have somebody who's having a hard time keeping on task being able to schedule out their time and being able to you know any kind of things like that um you know, those are all the building blocks that we work on together in high school. There are places that you feel, yeah, exactly. So realistically, as I said, um, we would go through that in the Thrive group, which is that month by month group. But um, we also in this new Catholic homeschool blueprint that I'm going to go through in July this month over the next four weeks. I can give you tips on all of that. But essentially, I want to leave you with this, Casey, is that... Um, it's like what I had started with, with the high school, you know, it really is about self knowledge for our teenagers before we launch them into the world. Some of it, and, and we're going to be releasing a podcast I did with Lorraine Bennett. She and her husband Art are the authors of the temperaments. She, you know, when you talk about um, choleric, sanguine, you know, uh, melancholic, phlegmatic, all those different temperaments. And then couple that with, um, Kathy Duffy also, it's again in that Thrive community. Yeah. So he's going to be a senior Casey. You see, he's going to be a rising senior in high school. So yeah, one year. So essentially, and is he going to go to college? Maybe you can type that into that because if you're talking about somebody for college, you know, they have to manage their time. So this year would be really in him getting the best gift you can give him is to help him to learn how to uh, manage his time well. And that's about self-knowledge. So doing that little test that I said, which helps him to focus his, his focus time, and that may be half an hour to 40 minutes focus time and being able to take a week's worth and just start in baby steps, a week's worth of assignments that maybe you can first start and model and say what's reasonable. 
instead of just handing them a whole syllabus and saying, okay, just go do it, helping them because that's what happens when they go to college. Yeah. Is that they're going to get a syllabus from the teacher. The teacher is not going to say now this week, read 20 people. Okay, there are some college teachers that do teach, you know, do do that and <laughs> treat them like little kids. But most of the time, you know, if they're not managing their own time, they can end up, you know, a week to finals and saying, oh, gosh, I now have three papers I have to write and hand in because nobody was there telling me what to do. So as a homeschool parent, we tend to, because we don't want our kids to fail and it's on us and I want to have them prepared. So we kind of do for them. So the best thing you can do is start to manage them in understanding their focus time and managing their schedule and it, and being able to understand. Maybe also environment. You know, there's a lot to even be said, okay, he wants to go to college, but his current challenge uh, is that I'm questioning if college is the right path. And I didn't mention it. Thank you, Casey, because this is really great. Huge benefit in doing a gap year. A gap year is a wonderful time. And it doesn't mean that he doesn't do any college one class. Have him sign up, if you can, either online or in person with just one class. And that is a great way to start managing what is it like to meet a teacher for office hours? What does it mean to look up the syllabus? What does it mean to meet deadlines and assignments? And you can work with that child that year. Now, even if that that is that one area of growth for this particular child, is that ability to really manage their time because that will be a big, huge burden to them when you launch them into the world if they cannot do that. And the biggest blessed gift you can give your kids is helping them to know what their focus time is and how to manage their own time. Does it mean they're going to do it perfectly? No. And they have to understand that it's a work in progress. So that's why we model. And we, so Monday morning, let's sit down with your schedule. Okay. What was that? You know, if it's a gap year, what is that um, syllabus? Let's break it down. They're asking you to read 100 pages of this book over the next month. How do we break that down? So really working through step by step that process with your child is great. And understand in college, again, and in high school, they don't have to do every subject every day, right? Except for maybe a language, if they're going to do a language. But I would keep it very simple for your son in this year, um, especially if you're not, you're thinking of a gap year. Gap year is a wonderful time to actually have them work in an area they can be apprenticed to somebody in an area that they're maybe interested in or of some service somewhere. Even I've had family, I've had coaching clients where um, they actually intentionally, that oldest child stays home to help school the rest of the siblings in a big family um, just as a way to give back to the family. It's like giving back for the greater good of the family. And then they take like a class or they work on starting their own business. Now, especially if they're a person that's, you know, hands-on, you know, see what your child's interested in. I would give them a taste of that. Maybe do an informal interview with somebody that they admire. And it's like, wow, you know, uh, for I had a friend who was renovating their house and one of their sons just couldn't get enough of like just helping out one of the people in the house that was doing the wiring. And that's when they opened the door to saying, gosh, maybe he doesn't want to go to college. And he went and became a journeyman and he's learning to, he's getting his, you know, full-time electrical license. So I hope that answered your question, Jace. KC, thank you. Thank you for asking that. Good, good. Yes, you can always connect with me, direct messages through the community. I'd love to uh, talk to you. And because very often if you have these questions, it benefits other people. So let's do that. And as I said, in after, and yeah, please tell your friends about the celebration of Catholic Homeschool Week. Yay, and it's July 18th to the 22nd. You're going to hear talks from Kimberly Hahn. We've been getting all, you know, amazing. Oh, we're so excited. Kimberly is going to speak. Pam Barnhill, Sarah McKenzie, Andrew Kudwa, like talking about writing. We have um, the Texeras going to be talking about teaching your, your kids financial management. 
We're also going to have um, Mary Ellen Barrett on like how to work, you know, working and homeschooling at the same time, meaning the parents have a part-time job, a full-time job. So really, really great celebration of homeschooling. It's all free. It's all right here in the community. So uh, please spread the word about that. And uh, right after that, that following week, we open the doors to the Thrive Support Group. And this is kind of like what we do in our Q&A sessions. So I'd love to see more of you there. I will be doing some of these lives throughout, you know, throughout the years. We're getting ready, at least here in the United States. This is summer. We'll start usually mid-August. A lot of families start homeschooling. So thank you, uh, uh, Mariana and Tina, Whitney, Molly. So glad you guys could join us. Please know if you came in late, there will be a replay. I will be posting that in the community and sending out a notification. So if uh, right now, I'll just keep the chat open for a few minutes. And uh, I wish you all well. May God bless you all abundantly. Have a beautiful summer and savor the moments with your children. They are precious. God bless. Bye-bye.